sir i will this is a very long story but uh, i shall try my level best to make it uh, as simple and short as possible so that uh, everybody can understand and appreciate anu sir anu start kare hum apna live ho gaya ek minute jaram hum broadcast kar rahe hain acha theek hai aap bata dijiyega jab hame karna ho हां जी हम हां लाइव स्टार्ट हो चुका है चेक कर लीजिए एक बार ओके हां लाइव आ रहा है चल थैंक यू थैंक यू शल वी स्टार्ट नाउ यस ओके सर ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ गार्गी कॉलेज डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी आई डॉक्टर रेनु सोनी एक्सटेंड अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम यू टू ऑल इन वन वीक नेशनल कोर्स ऑन प्लांट सिस्टमैटिक्स क्लासिकल टू मॉलिक्युलर अप्रोच वी एक्सपेक्ट दैट दिस कोर्स विल बी प्रोडक्टिव and the next few days will be enjoyable and fruitful to you all i feel happy to announce you that we have overwhelming response and have approximately 700 registration from all over india participants registered are from various courses like botany life sciences microbiology chemistry zoology before we start i request you all to switch off your cameras and microphone for smooth conduct of session you can write your queries in the chat box and we will present your queries to the speaker after the session is completed attendance and feedback form will be posted on the chat box at the end of each session so you are requested to fill it up our guest speakers of today's se session is dr c satish kumar he has already joined us so i welcome you sir on behalf of gargi fraternity thank you it's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to all my superannuated teachers from the department of botany Shashi Tyagi, ma'am, Geeta Mathur, ma'am, and Kiran Prabha, ma'am, your presence always make us very happy. Due to some urgent meeting, our principal, Dr. Pramila Kumar, is not able to attend, uh, join us, but her best wishes are with us. So once again, on behalf of our department, I welcome you all on the first day of our course. Plant systematics is the subject in which we all should be deeply interested. as it is one of the oldest discipline of all sciences and also basics to all other sciences this one week course would focus on various aspects of plant systematics it is designed to provide insight into classical taxonomy to molecular systematics and its importance the objective of this course is to provide better understanding of plant systematics its historical background and role of molecular techniques in identification depicting evolutionary history constructing and classification for this we have highly qualified and eminent speakers who possess vast knowledge and experience in the field of plant systematics i hope you all find this course highly engaging fruitful and beneficial for you all now i invite dr shashi tyagi ma'am emeritus professor from the department of botany and former principal gargi college to give welcome address and also motivate the participants welcome ma'am shashi ma'am thank you dr reno a very warm welcome to dr c satish kumar my colleague and student to the inaugural session of national virtual seminar on plant systematics from classical to molecular approach gargi college has just celebrated its golden jubilee and it is one of the best colleges of north of delhi university but also of india it is an award accredited institute where students are empowered and enrich their lives here at the gargi we want to carry on the legacy of the fearless and confident gargi gargi was a vedic scholar her name is mentioned in the vedic upanishad anyone who is associated with bagi college in any form either by doing a bs program or by doing a summer intern doing some part time job in bagi college we want that that person should be just like us 
we at gargi aim to create and keep the spirit of gargi alive you will be happy to know that molecular biology came into existence very recently when i did my bsc and msc there was no subject like cell biology molecular biology and biotechnology we used to do only genetics a little bit cytology but molecular biology came into existence with the convergence of different disciplines like biochemistry genetics microbiology virology chemistry and physics and i am happy to know that many students from chemistry background from physics background and from microbiology must be knowing the example of discovery of cytochrome with uh, the double helix structure of dna they were all done by chemists and physicists the techniques which you learn in molecular biology they are common to all fields you learn pcr you learn how the dna is sequenced how the different genes are sequenced you learn different types of genetic electrophoresis and so on so all these techniques are common to biology Biologists also rely on molecular biology tools. Nowadays, taxonomists also use molecular biology to give a species. Kaki, I'm up to boy. Sorry. Reproductive biology, 
breeding and conservation of orchids and carnivorous plants. He studied orchids of Western Ghats, Northeastern states, particularly Manipur, Sikkim, and Arunachal Pradesh, and also Myanmar. Sir has discovered two new genera and over 30 new species. He has published 12 books and 75 papers. Sir was chair of both Indian Subcontinent Regional Orchid Specialist Group of IUCN. Dr. C. Satish Kumar was awardee of Dr. T. N. Khushbu Memorial Award by Orchid Society of India in the year 2008. Dr. B. P. Paul National Environment Fellowship for Biodiversity in year 2003 by Government of India. Dr. V. V. Shiva Rajan Gold Medal of Indian Association for Plants Taxonomy in 2006. And he was also awarded as the most influential person of the year in 2005 from India today. Sir is engaged in promoting plant taxonomy, botanical history, botanical illustrations. Sir is deeply interested in music and paintings. With this brief introduction, I invite Dr. C. Satish Kumar to conduct his session on plant classification. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Sir, you... Can you see it, ma'am? Can you see the PowerPoint? No, sir, it's not shared. Is it okay now? Can you yes. see it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning to everybody. Uh, this, as I already told you, is a very long story, but uh, I will try my level best to make it uh, as simple as possible and as brief as possible. We human beings, also animals at large, so in the very beginning have uh, the tendency to, or aptitude for classifying things, especially those which can be used or those which cannot be used. That was the first classification. And uh, Human beings have been uh, great name givers, or uh, in uh, botanical uh, language, we can call them as nomenclature lists. And they gave name to plants and animals and whatever they came based on the use of uh, those things. They used names for plants, animals, and all types of objects. They categorized plants, animals, and uh, objects with or without specific terminology or systems. If you look at uh, the history of uh, uh, plant taxonomy, which later has added uh, uh, phylogeny interrelationships between different groups of plants, and uh, that was called the plant systematics, the name taxonomy gets its origin from uh, uh, the Swiss botanist. Uh, uh, decontrol and uh, his uh, relatives are also already in the field. Augustus Pyramus decontrol was the person who used for the first time the word taxonomy, which means uh, uh, the various kinds of rules and uh, uh, regulations which govern uh, the classification of plants or the Greek uh, taxis and uh, the, and he published uh, this uh, concept for the first time in the elementary theory of uh, botany, which was published in 1815. This is the book and uh, this is the introductory page on the right side. And uh, if you can look at it, 
if you can see it, you can see uh, the name that just for the first time. And the book was published in 1815, if you can see. He defined uh, this uh, uh, scientific discipline as the theory of classification applied to vegetal kingdom. So in those times, uh, plant kingdoms, plant kingdom is called a vegetal or vegetable kingdom in contrast to the animal kingdom. The knowledge of uh, uh, various kinds of use and uh, terms used to name plant ones, uh, plant organs was called a phytography. It's not phytogeography, it is phytography. So this is the most useful we have uh, seen in the last uh, 2000 years of history. If you look at this uh, uh, branch of science has developed uh, slowly but steadily. I have more uh, information from different disciplines and making it uh, one of the oldest and still surviving uh, scientific disciplines. Uh, very recently, uh, your Wilson's uh, uh, appraisal of taxonomy, he says uh, taxonomy can just be called uh, uh, the pioneer of uh, exploration of uh, little known planet. So every taxonomist or every botanist per se will try to understand uh, the characters of a particular uh, species or a genus and characterize which are the reasons how it is different from other uh, species. This is another uh, uh, work by Wheeler et al. It was published uh, in, uh, of course, uh, Peter Raven is also part of uh, this experiment. This was published in Science in 2004. Taxonomy, we are talking about taxonomy and uh, the word taxon was actually proposed by the Dutch botanist uh, H.J. Lam. And he has uh, used this uh, uh, word and they explained it in 1947 in the journal Taxonomy. Taxon. And this is the article which uh, he published. And the singular uh, of uh, tax, uh, it is a taxon and uh, the plural is taxa or many species together or many groups together. So that's a common word for uh, any group of plant or it can be even genera or uh, species. So this is the definition given uh, by uh, uh, taxon group. And it is uh, connected with uh, Actually, originally, this uh, uh, concept was published in uh, D.H. Uh, G. 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 M. Lawrence book called the Taxonomy of Vascular Plants, which everybody uses for uh, uh, plant uh, taxonomy lessons because it summarizes. And uh, he is uh, uh, Lawrence, and this is the most popular book which has been widely used in all parts of uh, the world. And if you look at uh, the right hand side, it has been mentioned that even before Lamb's article came in uh, Taxon, the word uh, uh, Taxon was used in this book for the first time. And that is how uh, the uh, word Taxon has uh, got a lot of uh, implications. And if you Ask me the history of uh, plant taxonomy. It begins uh, uh, from uh, the Aristotelian uh, period, uh, 384 to 322 before Christ. Aristotle lived and Aristotle uh, uh, tried to classify uh, plants which are used by human beings. And it is said that taxonomy is the oldest or probably the oldest design, certainly almost from the beginning of human existence, plants have been classified in their edibility and other uses to humans. If you look at uh, three major uh, cultures in the world, uh, like uh, the European culture, the Oriental culture, or the American culture, uh, 
these are the oldest cultures of the planet earth and if you look at uh, these three cultures these three cultures are uh, uh, intimately connected with the uh, uh, three plants and uh, it so happens that the three plants are uh, grasses or uh, cereals european culture is connected uh, closely with the wheat plant different kinds of wheat the oriental culture Uh, in which we are part of it, uh, we are uh, connected with uh, another plant uh, called the rice, and the American culture, the South American culture, is intimately connected with the uh, maize or the corn. Classification is actually a natural creation of human beings, and of and one of the most necessary pastimes. It is essential to our daily lives, and it started almost as soon as we were born. We need to classify and do things so we know what we are talking about, whether it is the same thing or different thing at uh, different places. So uh, every time, if you can think of a, a time when you cannot uh, distinguish a plant, and if you happen to see it in field. if you feel, if you happen to see a plant which you you have never seen and if you want to taste the plant also you will think twice whether to taste it or not because in in field especially in tropical areas when you go for field work you will come across uh, different kinds of plants uh, to us uh, northeastern side or in western ghats or in other parts of asia or in africa or, or south america the number of plants will increase and uh, uh, especially in the tropical belt the number of plants will increase uh, if you look at uh, the western ghats plants uh, which i am familiar with if uh, if you look at one genus suppose uh, i am looking at a genus hedicium which has uh, five species or 10 species in south india if you go towards the uh, northeast the number of uh, species in this in the genus uh, maybe 20 or 30 or 40 like that so depending on the region the number of species in each genus varies and uh, if you do not know the name of uh, any of uh, these plants we will be confused we will not uh, we will not come to know which one is uh, uh, usable and which one is uh, dangerous for human health so uh underlining the fact that what is most important thing is uh, to uh, classify plants to understand plants and uh, uh, fix up uh, the usual uh, category fix up its appropriate uh, group in which uh, these uh, particular species can be uh, kept otherwise we will be uh, in uh, real trouble it will be like a uh, 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 the biblical uh, phenomenon of uh, babel tower when people forgot to understand each one's language and it created a lot of uh, chaos and uh, confusion so taxonomy is actually uh, a branch of science which uh, uh, help us to arrange plants uh, in its its own way uh, in its own arrangement Uh, so that uh, we can understand uh, uh, the plants better and uh, make use of the plants for the human welfare so nomos in greek means uh, uh, laws or uh, rules and uh, taxis means arrangement so plant taxonomy is actually the arrangement of plants and uh, after uh, many years of uh, great learning and uh, studies we have added more and more information into this making this one of the most vibrant subjects in science so uh, the basic uh, function of uh, taxonomy is uh, classification uh, identification description and also naming of uh, the plants these are the basic uh, basis of uh, plant taxonomy systematics uh, is slightly different of course basically it is taxonomy only but uh, systematics is defined as the science uh, uh, that includes and encompasses 
traditional taxonomy plus that is the description identification nomenclature and classification of all of it. and that has its primary goal reconstruction of phylogeny or evolutionary this is the difference between uh, taxonomy and uh, plant system. If you look at the history of uh, uh, plant taxonomy, uh, many people used to talk about uh, Ptolemy, uh, his daughter, who was the ruler of uh, Egypt uh, for some time and who established uh, his own uh, dynasty. He was actually a friend of uh, uh, Alexander the Great, who used to bring, if you look at uh, uh, the history, uh, Alexander the Great used to bring a lot of plants from different countries. And these plants were brought to uh, uh, Ptolemy, the Ptolemy the one. And Ptolemy used to write about uh, uh, different kinds of plants and its uh, value. And uh, uh, if you look at, uh, there is a video in uh, YouTube also about uh, Ptolemy. And uh, Ptolemy used to uh, talk about different kinds of plants which uh, Alexander the Great has brought and the various uses uh, that uh, people uh, uh, at uh, different countries uh, have been uh, have identified. And these were uh, written by uh, the people who always flock around uh, Ptolemy. And uh, in papyrus uh, uh, scrolls, they used to write uh, all these uh, evidences of uh, different kinds of plants. Many of the Indian plants also were brought by uh, Alexander the Great and uh, brought to the notice of Ptolemy, who described them in its, his own style. That was a one of the oldest things happened. And uh, Theophrastus was uh, a Greek philosopher, we can uh, say that. He also published uh, Historia Antara, uh, classifying uh, different plants, uh, different plants uh, based on habit or form, like a herb, shrub. These are all basic uh, things. And also about animals, biennials, perennials, and also for morphology. So this was a long back, but still uh, uh, Theophrastus was able to identify these uh, characters and uh, made use of in his own uh, classifications. In the past. Around uh, 300 BC Greek, uh, uh, this man, he studied under Aristotle and considered the grandfather of botany. He wrote more than 200 works, only a few of which uh, survived. The most important work of uh, Theophrastus is inquiry into plants and also the causes of plants. And uh, this was another uh, several names which he used, for example, Asparagus, Narcissus. These are the names which have been originally used by uh, Theophrastus, which were uh, later uh, legalized or later. Uh, uh, scientifically validated by Linnaeus. Among the most significant observations uh, which uh, I have already mentioned about uh, uh, by this uh, Theophrastus are the external organs versus internal organs, distinction between different kinds of tissues, classification of the plants into trees, shrubs, subshrubs, herbs, etc. And also, uh, he was, uh, you can call uh, uh, the first person to distinguish between the flowering and non flowering plants and uh, uh, recognition of uh, different kinds of sexual and uh, sexual reproduction. He understood uh, the basic anatomy, which uh, he has mentioned in some of his works, like uh, petals, uh, sepals, then uh, modified leaves, and, and also true understanding of fruit. fruit uh, fruits were one uh, a group of things uh, which attracted a lot of uh, people in the past, in the beginning of uh, culture, because uh, they were uh, edible and people distinguished uh, different kinds of fruits, classified the fruits also. Uh, this is, uh, the, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the way in which uh, 
the plants have been uh, identified and the characters were given for this is uh, greek uh, greece elysium the plants have been uh, examined and uh, descriptions were given so in theophrast enquiry into plants you will see a lot of uh, things so it has whatever has been available or survived through centuries have been uh, now published and uh, they have been of course people who uh, uh, bridge the uh, main uh, text available added uh, their own uh, concept and uh, which made it into different volumes which you can test for historical things it is available on internet you can have a look at uh, this but uh, it has a uh, very historical value because uh, those who are for studying uh, bsc or uh, msc they know these are the things uh, very preliminary things which are recognized by your fastest in this book just for your information this is one uh, plan called the theophrasta americana which was uh, uh, named in uh, in honor of uh, theophrastus whom we have uh, seen just now and it's an american plant it is uh, uh, now uh, in a family of its own called theophrastaceae and as per the uh, new classifications of taxonomy uh, like apg4 and others this has been uh, now shifted to the promulgate family this is the plant theophrasta americana and uh, again uh, at the beginning of uh, the century uh, after the death of uh, christ he uh, the elder uh, a roman uh, physician who was interested in natural history uh, it is believed he made a large uh, uh, bountiful volumes a uh, lot of uh, volumes on plants but uh, very few only survive and uh, especially the natural history and naturalist nature's history in this book uh, he uh, writes about uh, the horticultural practices that was uh, uh, prevalent in rome at that time and uh, the medicinal plants uh, of uses uses uh, or medicinal kinds of plants in uh, europe and also he has uh, also mentioned about plant anatomy and trees used uh, for these are all directly concerned with the uh, human consumption and also human use so he was more interested in uh, analyzing these uh, species and also making them known to the outside world sadly he was killed in an eruption of mount vesuvius which you can see in a famous hollywood movie uh, the eruption of mount vesuvius pliny the second's uh, Na natura historia there are many other uh, uh, interesting factors available in this book uh, you can look at uh, these things and uh, during that time there was another uh, uh, great man he uh, is called the pedanius dioscoridae who is a physician in the emperor of nero's army emperor nero's army he published uh, the materia medica maybe it's uh, the first of its kind and uh, we have a uh, lot of inputs uh, available from uh, materia medica for dioscoridae which linnaeus uh, the great uh, name giver of uh, all times uh, made use of and the even uh, dioscorides name also was uh, commemorated suitably by linnaeus in his uh, great work <clears throat> this is about uh, uh, again uh, dioscorides the bound manuscript stored uh, in vienna is available and uh, now we can download so it contains uh, different kinds of uh, paintings of uh, uh, horticultural crops and uh, uh, some examples are also given in this book greek contemporary of uh, uh, 
Pliny the Elder, first century AD, and he was also uh, a person who wrote Materia Medica. And, uh, but uh, one uh, most important thing is this Materia Medica was published uh, not in the uh, printed form because printing was not there. So this has been copied by uh, separately copied. And uh, during copying, many of the uh, uh, major aspects of uh, these books, depending on the copies, were lost in the copying process. During the Dark Ages, uh, it's about uh, the 14th, uh, 16th century. Uh, during these uh, Dark Ages, it was copied and recopied and redrawn. If you look at uh, the original and the core things, uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, differences. And in many cases, the plant are uh, altogether changed from uh, one family to other. So that was the copying, uh, the adventures of copying by inefficient and inert people. However, since uh, they couldn't have to read anyone who possessed a copy was guaranteed fortune and success. It allowed, but for doctors of that period or physicians or apothecaries of uh, that period, it was important to have one reference work all the time uh, with them. Uh, and uh, they used uh, this for uh, treatment of uh, patients coming with a lot of uh, ailments and uh, the different kinds of uh, mints, carrot, and the African plant called the alu. These are all uh, things were uh, described in Materia Medica, which were used for various kinds of applications during uh, clinics. This is a look at this. This is the book. Look at this. These were added much, much earlier because printing was not there. This is a Greek book. And the dark period, uh, they, they, this period from fall of from the sons uh, is often called dark period. It is uh, called a so-called dark because little original work or uh, thought has come during this period. What little work, scholarship uh, there was consisted of copying the ancient works of the Greeks and the Romans. Unfortunately, this led to considerable loss of information and uh, mis, uh, much misinformation. Only one botanist uh, of that period who was uh, uh, of uh, great uh, caliber was Albertus Magnus. He employed classification for the first time. And uh, uh, we, we don't know how exactly he did it. But uh, the first to recognize uh, monocotyledons and dicotyledons, and also vascular and non-vascular. He is the person, Alberto Mag Magnus. He published his book called uh, describing various garden vegetables. He primarily followed the Theophrastus classification, and he was the first to distinguish uh, dicot and monocot. In the 15th and 16th centuries, as all of us know, a lot of uh, uh, great navigation happened in the world because of the uh, way in which uh, ships were constructed and uh, uh, moved across far and wide uh, uh, from the uh, European centers. If you look at uh, and uh, European powers during this period, they were able to uh, uh, study in the uh, of shows, the great harbors, which made possible, and uh, they kept all those things as uh, their own uh, uh, trade secret. No, nobody published in those times in 15th and 16th centuries, because the important that uh, uh, branch of science was called hydrology. Hydrology was that uh, branch of science which dealt with the depth of the sea, especially near the uh, harbors, uh, which tells about uh, whether uh, any uh, rock uh, uh, rocks are there, so that uh, she can uh, safely come and uh, anchor in the ports. 
so uh, european powers especially the uh, the spaniards the portuguese the french and the british those people for every region because they were uh, because with the advent of uh, uh, the ships they went around the world and for each country they kept uh, uh, the uh, uh, natural uh, ports and the hydrology of uh, those ports uh, uh, they kept it uh, very secret so that uh, whoever uh, without knowing the uh, hydrology of the area uh they came uh, by uh, ship and uh, their ship got uh, damaged and uh, ultimately wrecked so in uh, 15th and 16th century centuries this was the custom this was the trend which european uh, powers followed uh christopher columbus discovered the new world uh vasco da gama sailed all the way around uh, africa to reach uh, india and uh, ferdinand magellan completed the first navigation of the earth in 1852 allowing to start intensely large scale naturalist exploration around uh, most of the territories except australia and new zealand were discovered as soon as the end of 16th century that intelligence especially the british and the french and the, uh, german and all lots of people because when they explored they when uh, europeans explored these uh, areas in the uh, far east and or or far west they kept uh, uh, they always kept a lot of uh, uh, scientific personnel or uh, you can call naturalists with them artists with the with, with them they made use of uh, uh, the facilities collected plants and animals birds and all, all those things and also made uh, uh, sketches on the spot and these specimens they gathered were brought back to their home countries which uh, uh, the uh, scientists or uh, the great uh, people who were working in museum or uh, natural history centers they studied described and published this was the uh, major incident in the 15th and 16th centuries <clears throat> this is one portrait uh, available of uh, christopher columbus and uh, this uh, people believe to be, uh, believe this as uh, christopher columbus uh, portrait but uh, there is no uh, authenticity and uh, this is columbus uh, image that has come in uh, uh, the currency paper currency of united states of america <clears throat> this is vasco da gama's uh, picture ferdinand uh, magellan magellan's work was uh, on uh, east to far east far, far eastern side especially islands and uh, collections were brought back to europe for studies <clears throat> another great uh, uh, development during uh, this process of uh, inventions uh, were three major especially the invention of uh, uh, the printing press by movable type uh, system <clears throat> which was uh, uh, happened in the 15th century and uh, the latin translation of the erastus books came out in in 1483 uh, along with this uh, inventions because uh, many of uh, the ships were bringing back from uh, different continents uh, and great diverse types of plants uh, europeans thought of establishing botanical gardens and the first botanical garden was created in italy in the uh, 16th century in 1440s <clears throat> showing the increasing interest of uh, of uh, plants for allowing teaching and, and but at the time botany was not a, a separate subject it was part of uh, history or it was part of uh, medicine botany was thought thirdly in the botanical garden of peace 
Pisa, Italian uh, botanist uh, Luca, invented uh, the revolutionary method of preserving and studying plant consisting. <coughs> In, and also pressing uh, plants permanently to store them uh, in botany, and that was called a dried garden or hortosicus. So this was the uh, first stage of uh, uh, the herbarium specimen. So this was this has happened in uh, uh, Italy first, and uh, slowly it uh, went to other European centers of. <coughs> Then came uh, the age of uh, herbals, group of people who were uh, having uh, hand-painted uh, works, uh, like uh, the <coughs> uh, Sensi Pinsavo by uh, 1108, and continued through the next uh, 600 years in, in China, in many parts of uh, Eastern China, and also in some parts of uh, Eastern Asia, especially Japan. In Europe, if you look at a uh, similar type of people, they're already available, uh, like uh, Otto Brenfels, Lerome Bock, Leonard Fuss, Charles Clusius, Matthias. These people were basically uh, apothecaries uh, who wanted to have some reference uh, books uh, with the pictures and also important medicinal aspects of uh, the plants so that they could uh, refer back whenever a, a patient comes and uh, they can find and disease to for what type of disease and things like that. These are some of the examples. <coughs> During uh, 16th century, there were uh, many uh, botanists of uh, great merit, like uh, Kaspar Bochin. He used for the first time, binomial system of nomenclature in his publications. Uh, basically, these two publications, Prodromus Theatre Botanici, which was published in 1620, and Pinax Theatre Botanici, which was published in 1623. This is historical importance because he was the first person to use uh, binomial nomenclature. But sadly, he has. Uh, change his concept uh, uh, one by one. So uh, you cannot say that his uh, classification or his uh, concept as uh, he uh, did not uh, believe it fully, this binomial nomenclature. So he used to rank it, not on, uh, in consistent uh, manner. Uh, though he was the first person to use uh, this uh, binomial nomenclature. In Another person of merit uh, during uh, 16th and 17th centuries, Andreas Salpino, he organized a herbarium of about uh, 768 specimens and he published his uh, uh, book, D. Planty Libri. 16th, describing about uh, 1,520 species of plants, arranging herbaceous and woody characters. He organized them into 32 groups, such as umbelliferae and compositae. This is the most important thing, because uh, this was for the first time that uh, uh, these two groups were recognized. Even uh, you have to remember that, again, one more century has to go for normal nomenclature by Linnaeus. But before that, the groups looking alike, like uh, the umbilifers and also the uh, plants with the composite head inflorescence, they were identified as a distinct group of uh, uh, plants, not as families as we now know, but as uh, uh, groups. There were 30 groups, even uh, Palms were grouped together, and it took uh, many more years to understand the concept of uh, families in the uh, 17th and 18th centuries. So, Andres Alpino was very important, uh, his contribution, and he realized the value of flower and fruit intensification of vegetative characters. 
and uh, he was one more important thing is he was uh, the person uh, who first uh, uh, thought of uh, the concept of genera actually uh, whatever has been crystallized by uh, linnaeus later in 1753 was uh, uh, actually the ideas uh, originated by uh, andreas isalpino bohin and many others in the 15th and 16th centuries in fact uh, he was a student of dini whom i talked about in the lectures other significant plant taxonomists of uh, uh, 17th and 18th centuries were on british botanists by name john ray john ray was uh, <clears throat> having a lot of influence on uh, contemporary botanists of uh, of uh, 16th uh, 17th century he was the first person to uh, make use of all the uh, parts of plants uh, for uh, classification he is a most important works on his uh, methodus plantarum nova and the very important work of uh, john ray is uh, historia plantarum which was published in 1704 in which uh, there was a uh, classification of plants into herb shrub trees and then divided uh, the already known common species about 17000 species into 25 families but uh, at the time of uh, john ray there were no uh, family name was available so he simply grouped them into families that's all he distinguished uh, flowering plants and uh, non flowering plants <clears throat> and plants with one cotyledon he named monocotyledons was plants with the two cotyledons he also played a major role in the development of plant taxonomy and uh, more generally plant science he was uh, more of uh, interested in uh, in the science of plants as such especially in britain and other british colonies he created uh, the first textbook based dichotomy schemes that he used to classify plants this is the importance of john ray while at uh, more or less same time at uh, 19th century and the uh, beginning of 18th century <clears throat> there was a famous botanist in france his name was uh, peter manol or if you ask uh, english pronunciation it is peter magnol in french uh, g is uh, silent g is silent and uh, means uh, peter in english he grouped plants 76 families in his publication called prodromus historia generalis in qua family per tabulas this form of text that book was published in 1689 and uh, he was if you look at uh, uh, the history of uh, family names he was the first to use uh, the concept of uh, family name for uh, similar looking plants in the world but unfortunately he has not uh, uh, characterized each family and uh, he has not uh, described how it is different from other families but uh, these those things were done by another french botanist whom we will be talking about in little while from now this is uh, uh, the work of uh, <coughs> peter manol or uh, pierre manol uh, available in internet you can have a, uh, you uh, i'm sure you you must be knowing that in those times everything was written in uh, uh, latin and latin was the scholar's language so everybody had to learn latin and uh, write in latin so all the books of uh, uh, the uh, 16th century 17th century 18th century and beyond that all are uh, written in latin another french botanist joseph john d tunifort was the first to give descriptions of the genera in his uh, famous work work 
Elements Lee Botanic that was published in 1694. And uh, after some time, he enlarged his uh, older work into institutionalized career, arranging plants into different classes, families, and genera according to form and position of corolla and fruits. And... But uh, a very sad thing is, at that time also, sexuality of plants was not uh, recognized. So uh, the genus concept was new and contributed to a better structuration of classification. That is the most important contribution of uh, Tony Ford. And uh, the French botanists always have a great uh, soft corner of uh, Tony Ford because of his uh, detailed description of uh, the uh, gender concept and how it was uh, different from various authors. He described very nicely in his uh, book. <clears throat> He was uh, uh, director and professor, at the time it was called a professor of botany, at the uh, Paris Botanical Garden, or Chardin de Plante. He was uh, the author of Elementary Botanical, which contains description of about 698 genera, and totally about 10,146 species, with uh, 400 illustrations. This is most important thing at the time, this was not available. These illustrations were not available in botany textbook. This book was enlarged and published, as I told you uh, a little while ago, in 1700. He was the first to provide characterization of genera and to describe them accurately. If you look at his uh, description, you will come to know them. Tony Ford also traditionally classified plants into trees and herbs. But further grouping based on the corolla characters, especially in this book, Elephant and Elements. This is the book. This is the big first page of the book. And if you look at uh, here, this is the uh, French Botanical Garden, Chat de Plain, right? And this is the building of Paris Herbarium. This was much modified later. <coughs> There was another botanist by name Rudolf Jacob Camerarius. He published a letter entitled Dizu Plantarum Epistolae on 25th August 1694 and described how pistillate flowers form seeds. This was the first uh, revelation, the first to establish sexual re reproduction for the flowering plants. He was a director of a botanical garden at Tübingen. Germany, he was the first to recognize sex in flowering plants. And he also established through his researches that pollen was necessary for seed formation. These are basic uh, information uh, discovered uh, by chance and uh, made it into the stream of uh, botany for uh, others to make use of it. And Linnaeus was uh, one person uh, who made use of all these characters into his classifications and uh, made his classification as scientific as possible. The problem with uh, these early botanists where they described and they found uh, something novel, but they did it consistently, making it uh, to doubt whether they really proposed it or uh, <coughs> they have uh, some doubt about it uh, in later publications. So if you look at the 18th century in uh, plant taxonomy or uh, uh, the branch of uh, uh, plant science as such, this uh, century, 18th century is the most important, I would say, most important century. That uh, whatever we have seen in the last uh, uh, centuries, in the up to 18th century, 17th centuries and much beyond that, these were actually the setting of a background for 18th century revolution in plant science, especially in plant taxonomy. And uh, uh, plant taxonomy was uh, set on a, uh, a strong footing with uh, rules and regulations, uh, binomial botanical nomenclature, and characters of genus, species, and families on a very strong in the 18th century already. 
<clears throat> in spite of uh, the numerous new ideas and systems uh, that were produced from the 16th to the middle of the 18th century, names of uh, plants still and uh, constituted of uh, poly, polynom polynomial Latin names. Because uh, even if you talk about a single plant species, it will have a very long mouthful name, which is uh, difficult to uh, remember first and uh, uh, difficult to practice. So that was the uh, coyotes which was carried forward up to 18th century. So this led to a rather long, complicated, inoperative means to designate plants from and uh, became problematic in the context of uh, uh, great explorations, which allowed the discovery of more and more plants from all over the world. So we have already examined that uh, there were a lot of uh, navigations happening in different continents, which uh, resulted in the uh, uh, exodus of uh, plant uh, uh, from collected from various parts and brought back to Europe. So it was necessary to uh, name all those things and people were thinking of what to do because uh, the uh, great botanists of, uh, of uh, a period up to 16th and middle of 18th century uh, were uh, doing a lot of things at the time, whatever data were available with them. But uh, things have uh, gone beyond uh, a stage where uh, confusion and chaos uh, 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 prevail. And uh, 18th century was the time when uh, this has to be ultimately clear for uh, scientific footing of uh, the science. So, to overcome this, to overcome this impediment involving names of plants, one person, a uh, quite unlikely uh, person um, uh, from a small country called Sweden, came forward. He took a critical step forward for the development of uh, this branch of science. And his name was uh, Carolus Linnaeus, or shortly Paul Linnaeus. <clears throat> he suggested uh, dissociating uh, the distress of the plant from the name itself, because according to him, the name should only serve to designate the plant. Therefore, he assigned a trivial name to each plant, more than 6,000 plants in species plantar, and the name was binomial, only consisting of two words, the genus followed by the species. This was a, actually, of course, uh, as we have understood uh, thus far, this was not a, a Linnaeus uh, uh, discovery, because earlier it was discussed, but uh, Linnaeus was one person who consistently used it and he also designated the first part of uh, uh, the plant name of uh, or his binomial as the generic name and the second was the, as the species name, which was very clear and he described. For, <clears throat> for example, in 1753, he described all the plants, species names, giving the trivial name. This is the name he used, trivial name, or uh, uh, in the current name, you can call it a species now. He used uh, all the uh, plants available to him. He collected uh, uh, lots of plots, and his students, he sent students to different continents uh, to bring in plants for his study. And he classified them. And in, in this book, uh, Species Plant Plantarum, which is a very most important book for as far as uh, botanist this book is published in 1753, and it is the most important book for all the partners. In this book, he used, uh, if you look at, uh, this is the book. Can you see this book? This is the two-volume book of Linnaeus, Species Plantara. 
this was published in this is the bible of any taxonomy any plant this is published in 1743 he classified his tree of monogynia the first species given was cana indica the description provided was brief to look at to the point and matter of fact look at uh, the description fall is avatis you think accumulates nervosus that means it out sides pointed vein this is uh, only identifying character to linear given for cana indica very brief the rest of the attributes of the species are self explanatory uh, as it is included in class monotry one class one monotria that means monogynia monotria and monogynia with a single anther is in the district look at this book this is the book uh, volume one thomas one and uh, this is the first page on which uh, He divided it into twenty-four classes, as we now know. He divided the entire uh, plant kingdom available to him into twenty-four classes, and the class one is uh, Monandria. And in Monandria, this is page one of uh, species Plantarum. Uh, under Mono Monogynia, Mo Monandria class one and Monogynia, he has given the genus name Canna. and canna he has given uh, descriptions like this folis ovatis uterine acuminatis nervosus and this has been used by several people van roens book it is there flora sailanica it is there and also hortus sensis there it is and uh, canna it has been given another name in hortus clifortianus Canna spatulis bifloris. In page one, it is there. In Bohm's, if you look at uh, this number nineteen, if you look at, it is given the name Arundo indica latifolia, and he has given the uh, habitat inter tropicals, Asia, Africa, America. That is the word. Yes, this one is simple. So whether it is. to the map uh, different type of symbols that also he has explained in this book so this is the way for the first time in the world plants have been classified of course uh, they he has used artificial classification and however uh, critical it is however uh, abused at, uh, this classification in later years is this was one convenient class Because this is important aspect of Linnaeus' artificial system of classification, because this was the most important classification with which whatever plants you came across from any part of the world could be sorted out and kept in its uh, uh, right pigeonhole, what it is, and species what it is. So that time, for the first time in the world, you can, because uh, he has used plants from across the world. of course it was uh, the total number of species he described in uh, 1753 look at this 1753 this is the most important and 1753 was uh, less than 10000 species and uh, linnaeus at that time at that uh, time of the uh, operation he thought uh, the world flora will be less than 10000 species so that's what he believed it was a wrong concept because uh, as we know now even india we have about 17000 species because in south america was not explored fully and his students were uh, one student who went to south america never came back because he was uh, killed during an accident and uh, there were uh, other students who went to different parts of other regions especially japan and other regions they brought back a lot of uh, specimens and uh, Ultimately, uh, Linnaeus had a, a lot of confusion to how to fit in uh, new plants into this classification was his worry, and he tried his level best to enlarge his classification, 
enhances the descriptions, he enriches the terms. Like that, he, uh, with this uh, 17, 74, he published uh, Generic Landara, and that was another uh, uh, work which he made use of for uh, uh, various kinds of uh, uh, concepts he followed in Generic. Like his name, species that he studied under his 24 classes. There had been some attempts of binomials as early as Theophrastus, as we have already seen, who has been followed by the and a few others. Linney succeeded in popularizing his system as new play to all plants, for all plants and later on even for animals. Animals, he has published a, a book called uh, System and Nature, and uh, that was long lasting. So he, Linnaeus was the person who set uh, uh, the uh, stage uh, more creative and uh, more aggressive for other botanists and zoologists to follow. Because uh, Linnaeus had a lot of followers, not only in Europe, in other countries also. <laughs> Truly, Species plantarum has been the starting point of setting rules in plant taxonomy. And if you remember, even before writing uh, the uh, species plantarum, the first thing Linnaeus uh, uh, had a difficulty was that uh, there was no rule. People in Sweden followed one rule, one another person in Switzerland followed another rule, French people followed another rule. British people had their own rules. So it was a complete uh, chaos. So what Linnaeus thought was that, uh, first of all, we botanists should have a set of rules to follow. And that rule should be uh, universally applied. So what he has written uh, during his uh, time in uh, uh, Netherlands, where he went for getting his PhD, <coughs> That was uh, the time when he met a great botanist of Britain and also the uh, Netherlands, so Dutch botanists uh, like Borhav and many others. So that was the time he described, uh, uh, see, he, first of all, he should have a clear idea about rule form. So we are talking about his uh, species plantarum and uh, the use of species plantarum by the entire world in 1753 and onwards. But uh, even before setting up uh, this book, he published another book, which is called this, this, the, <coughs> this the book, Philosophia Plantarum. This is the most important book, in which uh, he describes the philosophy of botany. Actually, it is the rules and regulations and all other things uh, what we are now familiar with, where, and also this was basis for the uh, international power of uh, mechanical nomenclature or uh, nomenclature power. So this was this. So he made a beginnings even in Netherlands itself when he was uh, just uh, 30 year old and was working with uh, great giants like uh, Linnaeus, uh, Delineus, then, uh, Herman Borhal, Van Royen, and uh, many others, uh, the great uh, Dutch partners he, were, he was working with. And this uh, set of rules was uh, a prerequisite for others to follow it. So he first uh, published the rules and uh, regulations uh, concerning plant taxonomy. And uh, he has uh, used uh, uh, this, he followed it uh, very strictly in his uh, species plantarum which was followed by others in other countries of the world. So, so he used, used to since Linnaeus uh, until today, the more binomial system along with other principles for naming of plants was developed, standardized, synthesized, and formally accepted by taxonomists. And uh, this has been made into <clears throat> The uh, current code also, if you look at the current code, it's evolving every uh, four years, every, uh, uh, because a lot of uh, people have been working on it. 
Every six years, uh, this undergoes uh, revision, but uh, the basic structure of the uh, code remains the same, and which was largely based on Linnaeus contributions and the contemporaries of Linnaeus like DJSU and, uh, and uh, DJSU and others. So, yeah, after revisions are accepted at the International Botanical Congress, every six years uh, we meet uh, discuss uh, various uh, improvements or a wording of a EU, and then uh, we select uh, uh, whichever is applicable by oath, and it has been uh, for a grace period, and then it is made into a book of uh, nomenclature. Of. This is how it is done. So the basic things were, uh, the, see, when you have a, uh, uh, any competition in the run, you should have rules to follow. So these are the rules uh, framed by Linnaeus originally. It has been perfected by uh, the last 300 years. Many people have uh, uh, used their brains to uh, refine, fine tune, and make it more legible for others to follow. And that is how we have reached uh, a stage in which uh, rules have been followed universally by all parties. Linnaeus proposed his own artificial classification. This uh, now nobody is using it, but uh, still uh, for uh, many uh, years in the entire Europe, uh, this classification was followed for understanding the uh, species because uh, the basic unit of uh, any classification is the species. And uh, what we do, what we have to know is first, we should know what uh, that species uh, uh, is. Because we need to know the characters of that species for which good taxonomy should uh, write a detailed description. So Linnaeus has uh, described a detailed uh, uh, in detail all the plants available to him, either live or herbarium. And uh, those characters were used for his uh, artificial classifications into 24 classes. <clears throat> this is a view to, with the, with the goal to describe and classify all plants under the living things, he grouped them based on number and arrangement of stamens and pistils. Within flowers, contrary to Tunifort, who only focused on petals. So this was a great uh, uh, improvement great refinement and great enrichment so that people could easily uh, understand uh, various aspects of uh, And ultimately people have to describe the species in detail, then only they can meet and uh, find a position suitable for that particular species in classifications. He called the classification sexual classification referring to fundamental role of flowers in sexual reproduction. This system included five hierarchical categories, varieties. That is the basic uh, uh, basal thing, species, genera, orders, which is equivalent to the current families and uh, the major classes. This is the uh, ultimate uh, uh, sexual classification of Linnaeus basic outline. Look at uh, these uh, 24 classes you can see, uh, two statements, three statements, like that, uh, he has uh, under combination of all these things. He is, uh, he, is. he is the person who has made this sketch. Uh, uh, his name was uh, George Ayrett, who was an uh, artist of uh, Linnaeus for many years. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this was published in uh, 1736 when Linnaeus was in Netherlands. And uh, this artist, uh, what he did was that he made a uh, uh, of course, uh, he made a uh, uh, Linnaeus classification uh, very user-friendly and uh, very easy to work with. With this uh, type of illustrations of 24 classes, so that uh, we can easily look at uh, the number of statements or number of pistils and uh, to fix it into A, B, C, whichever category, it was easy to make use of it. Uh, but uh, what uh, this man did was uh, Eret uh, uh, made a 
large printout of uh, this one and uh, sold it in uh, Netherlands market so that uh, botanists uh, could uh, directly go and buy it in color colored wash which uh, however Linnaeus didn't uh, but uh, uh, it popularized of course uh, he, this man made money out there but uh, and also it uh, got uh, popularized in uh, Netherlands. <clears throat> These are the uh, uh, different classes of uh, lineage in sexual classification, which you can uh, go through. Names and their storage in memory along with the packets of information they reference are abiding themes of uh, Linnaeus scientific maturity. But to understand the huge renown he enjoyed during his lifetime and lasting significance, you need to recognize Carl Linnaeus or Carol Linnaeus was not simply a great botanist alone and a prolific advisor and memorizer of uh, uh, names. He was much more than that. If you look at uh, the development of a poor Linnaeus from a small family into who shot himself into the fame of uh, world acclaim. It was something uh, much more than that. For every name he believed, if you look at any name of Linnaeus, there is a storehouse of information or packet of information of each name. Each name, if you talk about any Linnaeus name, each name has a packet of information. So if you look at uh, each name, you can uh, immediately what uh, Linnaeus thought about that particular species, uh, a, a stream of uh, thoughts or a flow of uh, knowledge comes from Linnaeus' uh, huge acuity. He was something more, uh, if, you, uh, if you can analyze Linnaeus, he was something more of modern and uh, he can be called an information architect if you can uh, put it in the current uh, uh, knowledge if you can. And in uh, 2007, when uh, the world celebrated a uh, uh, tricentenary of uh, birth centenary of, of uh, Linnaeus, the British magazine Nature uh, brought out a, a special volume of uh, on Linnaeus, calling it uh, Linnaeus Legacy, bringing order to the world for 300 years. So whatever Linnaeus had done in 1743, is continuing with some modifications or others. But uh, look at the picture of uh, Linnaeus in this. He is wearing modern um, dresses and uh, with a barcode here. You can see a barcode also. So Linnaeus' species identifications and uh, keys were actually barcode to identify what species you are dealing with. So this is uh, uh, the tribute to Linnaeus by the major group of publications in 2007. You can, those who have not seen the volume, you can look at this uh, volume and note down this volume. It is a volume number uh, 446, now issue number 7133, and it was dated 17 March 2007. And there was uh, an article on uh, the legacy of Linnaeus. These are all articles available in, uh, in that uh, publication. It's a continuation of it. This is one picture which I got from uh, Phil Kripp, my friend in, who was working in uh, Royal Botanical Gardens, Q for uh, more than 30 years. He's a fa very famous uh, archaeologist. This is a portrait. And uh, if you look at uh, on his left hand, can you see anything? There is a plant, uh, his famous, uh, his uh, favorite plant, which is a common plant in the Europe, especially in the northern latitudes, 
this plant is uh, very common and uh, <clears throat> this was uh, named originally by Granovius, another botanist in uh, Netherlands. So publication came uh, much before Linnaeus publication. So it is pre-linear and uh, we cannot consider it as a valid publication. And Linnaeus uh, validated it as a uh, uh, linear yes. Linnaeus. Yes. Linnaeus lived uh, during 1707 to 1778. When he was in Netherlands, he published his System on Naturae. <clears throat> it was the basis for the sexual classification of plants, animals. He was uh, more interested in minerals also. So uh, he tried the classification in minerals also. And for your information, many of the medical terms <coughs> were also uh, in Latin, were also uh, proposed by Linnaeus because he was uh, basically a medical man. And in uh, 1737, while in uh, uh, Netherlands, he published the Critica Botanica, uh, Flora Laconica, it's a uh, It's a travelogue which he conducted uh, long before coming to Netherlands in the Lapland, which is actually a, a land in the northern part of uh, Sweden, and uh, now it is part of uh, Norway. And he also published uh, Hortus uh, Cliffordianus, which is uh, the work that he has done for uh, uh, George Clifford, who was a famous and rich banker in uh, Netherlands and uh, his plants, his uh, collection of books, everything he made use of in this uh, publication. And uh, one more work he list, uh, which is very important, it is called General Plantarum, which has uh, uh, undergone several revisions at a later date. And uh, it is uh, just as a species plantarum is important for uh, knowing the species better, uh, general plantarum is equally important for understanding the species. So, so he is. Uh, if you look at uh, these things, he is uh, setting the background uh, strong. And in uh, 1738, he uh, published another work called the Classis Plantarum, in which uh, 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 different kinds of fruits were used as the basis of classification. And uh, this system was uh, more precise and easier to use than many of them. That is the most advantageous thing of Linnaeus. Whatever he writes, it was much more uh, easy to use than the earlier work. So that was the most important character of uh, uh, his uh, works. And in 1753, uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, he published his uh, magnum opus, that was uh, Species Plantarum. Uh, in 1753, he published uh, uh, in this, uh, he published uh, Thousand Genera, which is already mentioned in this Genera Plantara, and uh, 7,300 species according to, arranged according to his uh, sexual system of classification. And uh, uh, most importantly, the binomial nomenclature was introduced in this book. This is a system of nature, system of nature, uh, genera planta, uh, critica botanica, hortus clefortianus, species plantarum, and genera plantarum. This was published uh, in 1753, and this was published in 1754. Genera plantarum, if you look at the original publication, the first edition, contained uh, 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 very condensed description of 935 plant genera on 380 October pages. Clearly such a book is uh, need not be uh, read as such, uh, but uh, rather to use as a, a reference book. If you have uh, <coughs> species plantarum at hand, genera plantarum also should be with you. 
so that it, it will work together. In one of his uh, biographical, autobiographical manuscripts, autobiographical, uh, I mentioned uh, this uh, particularly, Linnaeus was uh, very original in many things, not only in his writings, uh, Latin, the concept of his uh, ideas, public name, naming of his books, naming of genera and species. He also, everywhere, he was thoroughly, if you look at uh, uh, Linnaeus, and uh, even his autobiography, we know that autobiography, when, uh, if you are re reading autobiography of famous people, they will write, I was born and on such and such date, uh, to parents, uh, uh, X, 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 like, like that. So this is the way, uh, usually a biography is written in first person style. But in Linney's uh, autobiography, he has written two or three autobiographies. Uh, for every uh, autobiography of Linney's, he writes like this. Linnaeus was born on such and such stage. That is the way he used to write for every because uh, uh, he, from a detached angle, he will write about uh, himself. And he was uh, very conscious about himself as a uh, great botanist, great zoologist, great fishman, great ornithologist, and many others. So he had a, a, a great self esteem and he liked it also. So he described uh, his General Plantarum as a book that had put botany uh, a completely new footing by describing parts, all parts of stratification with a great accuracy and setting up characters on this basis so that a genus which has not yet been described in a linear manner is entirely imperfect. And uh, you can also say that if it doesn't fit with any of the Linnaeus description, this, this becomes a new genus. That was the concept because uh, a combination of characters which is selected for uh, all the uh, genera were uh, <coughs> comprehensive, very comprehensive. He used all the things. This and uh, self confident appraisal written down about two years before Linnaeus' death in, <coughs> in 1778 seems fully justified by the great literary success that General Plantara enjoyed because this is one of the books which got into several editions like uh, the other one. Linnaeus was one of the world's most celebrated naturalists of the field. The system of ascending species and the uh, in nature commonly referred to the sexual system was praised on the one hand and awakened controversy on the other because uh, he was uh, living in the 18th century and uh, uh, people even uh, um, more liberal and uh, uh, speakers or uh, people who were uh, known to be more li liberal and uh, enlightened uh, societies of Europe never used uh, 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 sexual, uh, the word sexual uh, openly. And uh, this was the first time that uh, uh, sexual uh, system in plant was uh, given importance for classifying the entire group of things. So <clears throat> he also uh, traveled to, he, he did not travel much outside uh, uh, Sweden. Even in Sweden, he made a two, three uh, uh, journeys to uh, the northern part and the Eastern islands of uh, Sweden, but not otherwise. And he published uh, a few travelogues also. One is uh, the uh, Flora uh, Lapland, Flora Lapland, uh, and uh, a few other works, like a, a, a book on a small island. And it's, uh, uh, and also he looked at uh, the uh, mineral deposit in different parts of Sweden to help uh, the government to make use of it because coal was uh, being mined from different regions. So he was uh, deputed to undertake studies on mining and the extraction of other uh, minerals in other places. 
<clears throat> so he and he was uh, he when he got his uh, medical degree he came back to uh, uh, sweden and practiced medicine it's the most important thing because when he was conducting his studies in uh, falun and he happened to meet one lady and uh, that lady was uh, uh, more interested in uh, linnaeus than his work and linnaeus for the first time was meeting a girl so linnaeus also uh, he has written in his diary that on that particular day his mind flew away from his youth self that was the time he was uh, and uh, he danced with that girl also but uh, <clears throat> that girl's father was a famous doctor in fellow who didn't want to give a hands of uh, his place who was just a botanist always collecting flowers specimens uh, without a job and uh, without a medical degree because he was a famous medical man uh, and linnaeus approached him uh, that uh, he wants to marry her uh, but uh, he put one condition the first thing is you have to uh, uh, get a medical degree first and to stand uh, by your own fee uh, so because of that press pressure that uh, linnaeus went out of uh, sweden and uh, because sweden uh, by country at that time uh, we didn't produce any medical degree or there were no university which was uh, giving medical degrees so he went to netherlands and uh, got his medical degree got introduced to several uh, dutch botanists he briefly visited london and while coming back he visited the uh, paris botanical garden and uh, met uh, the famous jesu uh, botanist and came back and at a later date married uh, sara so this is one book uh, of linnaeus i have one more book on linnaeus which is the comprehensive uh, book mummy is that mummy is that uh and the people students who worked with this uh, with linnaeus i don't know whether you know it or not linnaeus used to uh, give the uh, titles for uh, research work for all the students and uh, after some himself wrote uh, the uh, thesis for all the uh, students and got their degrees so these were uh, linnaeus students uh, you can look at it. one person uh, you Just look at uh, some of the people. Walla, uh, he died uh, after a trip uh, to East India at the age of 35, and uh, he named uh, uh, he commemorated the uh, Torin uh, and uh, genus called Torinia was described, and uh, Carl Peter Thunberg went to uh, Japan and then he succeeded in the chair of uh, Uppsala University. and uh, he was in yes and per kam arman uh, this was a uh, guy was a bit uh, eccentric and uh, daniel solander was uh, another partner who was a linnaeus student but uh, he did linnaeus because the linnaeus didn't uh, know daniel solander to ma- marry his uh, Doctor, so he left Sweden and they went to England and settled there. This is Daniel Solander. He was originally a student of Linnaeus, and he very much wanted to marry this girl, Linnaeus' daughter Christina. Somehow, oh, Linnaeus didn't like uh, this man marrying his daughter, so he went away from Sweden to. this plancha named after him so people who worked with linnaeus uh, are called uh, apostles his students were ambassadors uh, for his uh, classification and were well known 
in Amsterdam, Berlin, London, at Paris, and all other centers of uh, uh, learning in Europe. Their reputation has uh, uh, reached, as experts reach everyone who understood natural history whenever they look at it. And Linnaeus, because he was basically a, a, a medical man, he was a physician, he got his degree for uh, treatment of patients. And uh, in those days, it was necessary for the botanist or the physician to make his own medicine. And uh, the knowledge of land was more important because uh, uh, the doctor himself has to, or the physician himself has to prepare the medicine for uh, uh, giving it to, to the patient so that uh, they can uh, get uh, remedy of uh, so Linnaeus with this uh, vast knowledge in the plants and he was the first ethnobotanist you can call him he was the first ethnobotanist because he collected data from the uh, people of uh, Lapland on all the medical data all the plants and how it is used by the uh, people of Lapland <coughs> and this uh, King Gustav III he had uh, uh, several uh, diseases including a sexually transmitted disease. And Linnaeus was who cured him from all the diseases. And uh, because of uh, that, uh, Linnaeus was given access to uh, King uh, Gustav III. And his uh, students also uh, got uh, admitted to various persons in the entire Sweden and has uh, made the court physician of uh, Gustav III. So these are the famous uh, students of Linnaeus. <coughs> there are several books on uh, these things. This is the place where Linnaeus Linnaeus, <coughs> if you look at uh, the species plantarum and uh, genera plantarum, those who are uh, closely uh, reading all those books, it's a characteristic of his life that at every uh, period of uh, Christ, Linnaeus impresses the ability, industry, and enthusiasm, despite unfortunate impression given by a certain brashness, egoism, brought influential people to his aid. So, um, many things happened. Even if uh, he didn't have much money, several uh, bankers, several wealthy people came forward to help him with money and uh, he could never uh, repay them with money, but uh, uh, later gratefully enshrined their names in the literature of God, like uh, Rothmania, Stobia, Celsia, Gronovia, Lausonia, Plifotia, Permania, Borjavia, and several, several names. If you look at, uh, uh, this is Adams and uh, Michel Adams and Hanspots who has been uh, named a genus called Adensonia. This is Adensonia. This is a recent picture by uh, my friend uh, C.L. Chan, who had been to Madagascar recently, very recently. And uh, look at the, uh, the trunk. It's a very a lot of information available on Adensonia. Adensonia in Madagascar. And another person was Alamant, uh, a Swiss botanist and physician, who was a correspondent uh, of Linnaeus, after whom he uh, called it uh, Alamant Akhapatika. And uh, the city of Chikala, there is a statue of Asclepius. Asclepius was a person who uh, uh, is a uh, something connected with the medicine. And uh, he was, uh, mother was killed. And uh, <clears throat> he was he was saved. And uh, he named one genus as Asclepia. And the Avicin uh, Middle East from uh, Avicin. Bokin, he had a great respect for uh, both the Bokins. And uh, so for both the Bohin, he commemorates the genus. 
books, uh, this one book, Theatre uh, Potency. So look at this uh, leaf uh, resembles or aptly commemorates both the bohics. That is what the is. This bohini accumulator. And several other. Binon is a French botanist or Bignon. And he has named uh, Bignon. And Herman Borhav was a famous uh, Dutch physician in uh, when Linnaeus was there. Linnaeus came there and uh, uh, it was very different for uh, Linnaeus because he was an young botanist. And this man was at the uh, prime uh, uh, period of uh, his uh, uh, scientific career. So it was difficult to meet him. So um, Bronovis arranged uh, uh, a letter for him. And that's how he met uh, Borhav. Borhav uh, was initially not interested in Linnaeus or his work. But uh, after looking at the, uh, the, uh, the manuscript, he was uh, very much impressed. And uh, he considered uh, Linnaeus as a uh, son, and he wanted him to leave there. <coughs> but because uh, back home, Linnaeus had problems of his uh, fear. His uh, um, girlfriend was... Uh, about to be married soon, so he had to rush back to Sweden to marry Sarah. So he left Borhav in Sweden, and uh, next year Borhav died. And another friend was uh, John Berman. Uh, he was another Dutch botanist. He was uh, given the name Berbania, and this is uh, in name of uh, Andrea Cisalpi. Uh, Kamalin was another botanist uh, who was uh, uh, partly uh, concerned, uh, connected with the uh, Indians because he was a medical man. He was a medical merchant, actually. He used to collect plants and uh, make uh, medicines and sell it to the physicians across the world in that time. And that is how he came to know about the uh, Hortus Malabaricus. And for a few volumes, he was the editor of uh, Hortus Malabaricus, which is prepared in Cochin in Kerala and published in Amsterdam in 1768 to 1793. So Kamalin uh, was a great uh, and uh, Linnaeus committed uh, comedy, like uh, Kamalina, the genius Kamalina was uh, and Dioscoridae, uh, I have already mentioned, he has uh, uh, mentioned the made use of uh, African plant uh, Dioscoria. This is a drawing by uh, uh, Makino, a Japanese botanist. And uh, uh, Melaina also, he has a genus called Melaina. This is Melaina. <coughs> The French botanist uh, Pierre Menol, he published a genus called Magnolia or Menolia. Uh, English pronunciation is Magnolia. This is Magnolia from Shillong. Olaf Redbuck, the anchor, was actually a uh, patron and uh, he was a great uh, person uh, when Linnaeus was uh, just uh, studying in college. Uh, he had uh, two, three wives and uh, several children. And uh, lineage to eat all the battalion of uh, children. So he was given some money for uh, teaching. And uh, Olaf uh, uh, allowed him to stay with him. And, uh, because he, he was, Linnaeus uh, came from a poor family with the nomad. So he named uh, this Red Bakia, named after. <clears throat> Sloan was uh, another student, uh, was a great worker and uh, was in Linnaeus, you know, several species of South America, and he named one uh, species on genus as a Slonia, belonging to Heliocarpus. 
this theta this theta and one very interesting thing is the linnaeus as i told you had a lot of uh, correspondence with the uh, botanists naturalists directors of botanical gardens across the world and he used to receive a lot of seeds plants herbaceous specimens and uh, fresh collections new plants from different people one guy uh, who helped him linnaeus in the earlier stages was a russian botanist oh, sorry a german botanist who worked in uh, in uh, st petersburg as the director of the botanical garden for many years originally he was a very good friend and both linnaeus and uh, cjs back used to exchange uh, different kinds of uh, plants and seeds and materials uh, between themselves but when linnaeus published his uh, species plantarum the sexual classification uh, cjs back uh, got furious and uh, he retorted that linnaeus uh, maligned the science of botany by uh, bringing sex into it and many other uh, uh, reasons which was uh, linnaeus uh, never liked uh, people criticizing him linnaeus always believed himself uh, much above others and believed that whatever he has been doing is for the sake of science and nothing else there is no need of personal rivalry or anything like that but uh, see just bits comment linnaeus uh, uh, it uh, not very lightly so the correspondence uh, though despite continue linnaeus had a, a lot of reservations about uh, see just bits behavior because he published uh, an article on the species plantarum and uh, his uh, sexual classification uh, abusing linnaeus uh, in uh, no small words so um, this got uh, this uh, linnaeus got uh, infuriated uh, uh, by the attack of cjs back so linnaeus uh, technique uh, to counter such uh, uh, adversaries was uh, just like any other botanist uh, good uh, way of uh, treating uh, enemies he named one plant uh, as uh, cjs bacteria that was his uh, poetic uh, uh, punishment for uh, cjs bacteria this is the plant this is uh, the uh, cjs bacteria linnaeus uh, named this and uh, this was an obnoxious weed in uh, the european uh, road sex so he named uh, he, uh, this uh, planta cjs bacteria and uh, sent a, a packet of seeds the label uh, he put a label if you look at uh, the earlier slide he put a label as cuculus ingratus that means uh, thankless uh, that is the meaning so this something in latin he knew only latin and swedish language swedish that also uh, the uh, uncivilized swedish of the southern region of sweden he was born in southern region. so he used uh, latin more often so in that uh, seed packet he has written cuculus incretus and send it to cjs back without knowing he thought uh, this a uh, uh, new genus and species he just uh, grew the plant and when it uh, started flowering he immediately uh, Uh, felt what was the trick uh, played by linnaeus so that was a weed and an obnoxious weed for which linnaeus has given his name is despicia orientalis <clears throat> these are other two students peter osper and uh, olaf torren they were uh, exploring uh, india and other after which uh, linnaeus called the Hospitia sinensis. This is uh, Torrens. Is named in honor of his student Torinia. He came to Mumbai and collected a few plants, and uh, then left. And uh, he died in Delhi. He was in Mumbai in, and also in Gujarat. He collected plants from that region. 
Tony Fort, uh, uh, Joseph Pitton uh, also, he was, uh, we liked him very much. So he collected, uh, this is Tony Fort, yeah, Valley Chief. Into uh, Bar Baraginese, now in a different genus. This picture was taken in uh, uh, Great Nicobar Island, in the southern uh, island of uh, Andaman and Nicobar Archipelago, these two plants. So we were once we were uh, uh, inside this because uh, it was too hot. We cannot uh, stand. So we sat uh, under this tree for some time and uh, saved from it. And uh, like that, uh, there are several mythological names also he used, like a Andromeda, which is a um, Greek myth. There are several things he used. Contributions of Linnaeus. Prior to the time of Linnaeus, the science of botany was in chaotic state, which I have already mentioned. So he was the person who made uh, Linnaeus botany much more uh, relevant and uh, interesting. And uh, people were uh, encased in uh, more uh, so in Linnaeus' work. The problem of uh, the great uh, botanists of all time has been to find a natural system. As we have already mentioned, the linear system was an artificial system on which every plant will be shown in perfect relation with other plants. With this problem, all the distinguished botanists were, were busily encased to find out a classification uh, which uh, will be natural. The general principles of classification which were introduced his invention of specific names, improvements in nomenclature and terminology, and the wonderful precision of his uh, descriptions. Rental, the study of these sciences as pleasing and easy as it had been previously, it's um, all uh, laborious. But if you look at all the systems which have been uh, available from uh, Linnaeus downwards, there are systems which are uh, in uh, merit of merit at uh, some point. Some are not at all uh, much uh, useful. So all systems, whether it is a good system or a bad system, all systems flourish for some time and uh, gradually they fail. Linnaeus was one of uh, world's most celebrated naturalist of the, day, the system of ascending a species and its uh, propagation in nature, commonly referred to as the sexual, was traced from one hand. This picture I have already. Drawn. This is uh, one uh, uh, genus which is, uh, if you look at uh, the name I have written, Linea Drawn X L, L dot. This means the genus name Linnea uh, was originally proposed by Gronovius, his friend, but uh, it was not scientifically validated and it was validated and published by Linnaeus. So this is the way, if you happen to see uh, like this, it means uh, the first author or the abbreviation of a, this is abbreviation of Gronovius, a Dutch botanist. And he has, uh, he wanted uh, at the time of his death, he told him that uh, you name this uh, plant as uh, Linnea. And uh, since he couldn't publish uh, scientifically, so it was validated by Linnaeus. And uh, after X, it becomes, so this is how, this is validation of <clears throat> uh, Swedish people in 2007, they. Uh, uh, brought out a currency featuring uh, Linnaeus picture and also his uh, first classification. If you look at uh, on the this side, on the uh, inner side, he is uh, drawing, this is his own drawings, which he made uh, for uh, giving it to his uh, uh, teacher. In uh, Sweden, when he was working in um, uh, Sweden, Every new year, students should give uh, some present to <clears throat> the teacher. Linnaeus uh, 
being a poor man, he didn't have money to buy some gift for his uh, teacher. So he made a manuscript on the <coughs> pollination between different uh, plants and the use, use of uh, sexual characters. So this was given as a, a gift to the teacher who was very much impressed. And uh, uh, this has unearthed and it has now uh, uh, adorned the currency not of uh, Sweden. Because uh, it brought out in uh, uh, 2007. And they also brought out uh, uh, coins also, gold coins also, but uh, this is uh, slightly costlier. I tried to get uh, this, I have, but I tried to get uh, one. But each coin costed uh, nearly 35,000 rupees. So I uh, decided not to be more aggressive on getting linears and memorable. This is Linus. And uh, uh, Charlie Jarvis of British Museum brought out a book uh, uh, at the time of uh, the 300th birth anniversary of Linus. It's a very big book, very heavy book called the Order of Caius, looking at uh, every Linnean name and their names and the correct names. He has done uh, marvelously well meticulous work by uh, Charlie Jarvis. Uh, another person uh, after Linnaeus I want to uh, remember is Linnaeus uh, died in 1778 and his legacy continued for many years, uh, many decades and uh, uh, centuries, still it continues. Uh, and in um, France there was a person, <coughs> botanist, <clears throat> of course, uh, he, uh, this man's uh, father, Linnaeus, knew very much. Alphonse de Canu. This is August Laurentin. He published the name of Linnaeus of And this was published in uh, 1718. This book is very important for uh, botanists, all the botanists, all the taxonomists in particular, because just as uh, Species Plantarum and uh, its publication in 1753 is important for all the botanists, uh, the man's name and uh, his publication, Genera Plantarum in 1789, are also important. Because species plantarum uh, describes species, and it's the starting point of the binomial nomenclature. Just as that, uh, this book of uh, 1789 is the starting point of family names. I told you several uh, two occasions they were the family names or fa grouped uh, different kinds of plants into uh, families but uh, they have not given any name or scientific validation, has not been given. And it was the French botanist, uh, Alphonse Laurentin du Jassou, the person, he was a uh, director of the French Botanical Garden or Paris Botanical Garden or uh, Chardin de Plante. That is the place where he was for many years, where his father and uncle were also worked. And one of whom was very close to uh, and uh, this this is a recent book on you can that uh, the author Peter. This book is a recent one about. Uh, the Jesus uh, contributions to plant science. You can make use of it and you can, you can get to know because whatever the uh, <coughs> Jesus has written uh, also in uh, Latin, that was the uh, reason. Uh, but uh, this book has uh, everything in English, you can easily understand. This is the place, uh, Paris Herbarium, and the garden is. Uh, Chardin de Plante, uh, Paris Botanical Garden. This is the uh, uh, Jesus Jenner, in which uh, all the 
year is 1759. So, note that this book is of great importance as a starting point of botanical nomenclature at the rank of family. So, family names begin with uh, D. Jesu's book, published in 1780. 99 families were described in uh, this publication, and of which 16 still stand today. And some families were treated at, uh, uh, as part of uh, uh, already other names. <clears throat> General term of uh, DJSU was the first to arrange the genera of plants according to their natural orders. Or natural order means uh, uh, family. I, if the current name is used, it, it can be families. So binomial nomenclature was very important at that time. Uh, Linnaeus himself told, "Nomina sinensis perit the cognito era." That means uh, without any name. Non knowledge exists. So that is more important. How strange and chaotic life would become if it were possible for identification of everything we see, make, or have. The acquisition and dissemination of knowledge would become impossible. And the business of the world could not go on. So, this is the reason behind uh, uh, plant taxonomy. This is the reason behind the naming of a species naming of a genus, naming of uh, 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 levels of classification, including uh, families. So in uh, uh, Britain, there were uh, uh, great partners who adopted a lean concept, like uh, W.J. Hooker, who was a uh, director of the botanical garden. And in America, Sam Peter, who was uh, more influential in US. So in Euro in Britain and uh, Euro in US, <coughs> there were um, strong takers of Linnaean concepts and uh, methodologies, which helped them to. So this is uh, W. Hooker. This is almost. Uh, this is. Uh, Double coconut, and in uh, in <coughs> South India, in India, <coughs> the Scottish botanist Oxford worked in uh, Calcutta Botanical Garden as its uh, director, and he used <coughs> whatever uh, concept of uh, Linnaeus, because in uh, uh, when he, this man was working as an assistant surgeon in Madras Roman Hospital in Chennai, he made friendship with a Dutch partner by name Kienich or Kienich, who was a direct student of Linnaeus in Copenhagen. He was from Copenhagen, but he was working with Linnaeus and sending plants from <coughs> southern region to Linnaeus. So Linnaeus got a uh, first uh, experience of uh, seeing southern plants of India, uh, collected and gathered by Kenig uh, <coughs> and uh, sent to him. So this was used. And uh, this man got uh, interested in knowing it, and uh, Kenig uh, advised him to make uh, large folio size pictures and to make them uh, describe the Linnean way how to describe all those things. Uh, he showed uh, and it was adopted by William Roxborough. So in William Roxborough's Flora Indica, he has been following what is uh, Linnaeus classification, not other classification, because at that time, other classifications have uh, not come, but he used uh, Linnaean, Linne he was uh, also an ardent linear following Linnaeus classification at the influence of uh, Kinnick. And uh, after some time, then uh, another Dutch uh, Danish botanist came to India, uh, who was called Nathaniel Valich, who also became the director of uh, uh, Calcutta Botanical Garden for uh, several decades. And he also continued with the uh, Linnean terminology. He followed uh, 
These botanists followed the exact uh, methodology adopted by Linnaeus in their publications. This is one book uh, of uh, Valik. <coughs> These were believed natural systems of classifications after Linnaeus. Michel Adams and Bernard D. Chessieu and uh, main groups about the letter. Hello, I'm requested to mute your mic. Whose mic is on? Is it interesting sign in? Hello, sir, please check. Paraya, my, apna, Somebody's mic is on. Okay. Now, these are the early systems of natural systems of classifications uh, by like Robert uh, Brown. Then Bendahum Hooker, which I will be talking a little more detail tomorrow when I get a chance to speak with you. So uh, I leave this. This I will not uh, tell tomorrow because I am having a full day discussion on it in Arab London. This I leave. Merits and demerits I will discuss tomorrow. Post Darwinian natural system, the German classification uh, by Eckler, then another classification by Engler and Prantil, which was published. It's a modified classification of uh, Eckler. It provides key to all the plant groups, monocots, then dicots, catkin bearing plants. This is Adolf Engler and uh, Prantil. Uh, they were working and uh, German botanists were uh, very detailed studies after uh, getting enough inspiration from uh, Linnaeus works. So they uh, very seriously looked at the, you know, the classifications and they had their own uh, way of looking at it. It's uh, Engler and uh, Randall class uh, classifications as a whole, 303 families of plants were recognized in this system. These are the uh, characters used for the classifications. <coughs> Plant kingdom has 13 divisions. I've undergone several modifications. Now it is uh, uh, more than that. Some even deal, dealt with the bacteria, different types of algae, fungi, bryophytes, and pteridophytes, and many others. Gymnosperms, everything. Angiosperms uh, are uh, divided into <coughs> monocotyledons and dicotyledons in angular and cotyl classification. Monocots have further divided into 11 orders and 45 families. That is how, this is the uh, revised Melchior classification. There are many uh, differences, but uh, more can be added on to. Dicots are divided into two subclasses, namely Archiclamidae and Simpata. Just look at uh, the details of the classifications and uh, I can give the PowerPoint if anybody wants to. Merits and uh, demerits of uh, Engler and Kratt classification are uh, much uh, discussed in uh, books. And, uh, I will tell only one example uh, about uh, Engler and Krantil uh, classification. Uh, I take the example of Aracea of Engler as uh, uh, Aracea was one family which uh, has uh, uh, especially Engler himself worked on the family uh, with uh, resources from various uh, continents and he himself studied and described. So 
uh, he proposed a classification for this family in this uh, system, which was revised in later publications also. But uh, uh, strangely, even after proposing uh, this classification uh, 100 years ago, Engler and Prandtl's classification of uh, RSA is uh, still uh, valid. Valid in the sense, uh, the basic outline is the same. Despite uh, molecular data available, various kinds of other uh, uh, data from uh, other branches of science like uh, pollen, pollen grains, uh, uh, then uh, pollen uh, cytology, chemistry, all those data were available of RSC. Uh, the basic outline of Angular classification uh, didn't change at all. Because that was the merit of uh, Angular and Prandtl's uh, classification of the family RSC. This has not happened in other families where people are not, uh, uh, people are either classified only uh, general families into groups. But uh, within the group, uh, what will be in the first genera, people are not uh, water. But uh, Angler and uh, uh, Prandtl classification, if you take RAC as an example, that classification, even after 100 years of uh, more revelations of uh, characters from other branches of science, still works. And it is uh, approved. Even APG also says, uh, uh, Angler's RAC is still the best bet. That is what uh, people believe. So uh, it's a, a good, even without knowing everything, 100 years ago, people could uh, visualize what could be the characters of uh, this. That is more important. And post Darwinian natural systems, again, by German or American, and the phylogenetic taxonomy, which we have uh, studied in our. Low classes. This is the uh, phylogenetic taxonomy of flowering plants. And the another American botanist is Hazard Gray. And uh, uh, lesser known are uh, people who have uh, contributed, like uh, Rendell, then Hutchinson. Hutchinson was actually walking in uh, uh, Royal Botanical Garden Q in uh, early uh, uh, 90, uh, 1900. Uh, as a herbarium assistant, and he was uh, he was a very junior staff, uh, taking specimens from the pigeon hall and uh, making available to uh, J.D. Hooker, who was uh, served in Royal Botanical Gardens queue for uh, uh, several several decades. He was at that time working on the genus in patients. And this man uh, was at that time was still an in fellow, collecting specimens, taking away specimens from different pigeon holes and uh, giving it to um, John Hutchinson. And uh, this man studied and worked vigilant and diligently for many years, many decades. And he, uh, at the end of his uh, career, he. Uh, for a chance to propose a classification of plants uh, much different from what uh, Bandham and Hooker has, uh, have uh, done it in their uh, classification. So his, his uh, daughter wrote in the, in the uh, preface of uh, uh, Hutchinson's work that J.D. Hooker never uh, might have thought of the person who is uh, just uh, supplying herbarous specimens. After some time, will write a classification which was uh, much uh, uh, against uh, Bandavan classification. That is what it is. But he was a very hard uh, What is it? Uh, classification is not fault. This is what he has written. And, uh, John Hutchinson's is not a much taller. He classified it into herbacea and lignose. This is the uh, Hutchinson's classification.
what is the very important feature is uh, this uh, family description is of uh, high order and valuable features are given in the key for identification which will help us to add. the system of classification of much of practical value the treatment of monocots is more adequate when you compare with a bandhavan uh, hikka system where uh, in between uh, monocots and dicots the gymnas comes by And that is an aberration in the former classification, but uh, those things have been corrected in this classification. And he believes uh, this classification to be a phylogenetic one. Shortcomings are many, which I am not going into details. I will give. However, in the opinion of most taxonomists, taxonomist Hutchinson has contributed an excellent service through his because of his studies. by his most careful philo during the several decades than any other similar contribution these are which such uh, uh, as published other conquest was working in uh, new york botanical garden and uh, later in columbia university uh, his classification uh, was a good one with a lot of uh, data on various uh, branches of science incorporated but unfortunately he couldn't uh, fully develop uh, the system this is another complex classification uh, in the various publications he presented an elaborate interpretation of his concept of classification the evolution and classification of classification in 1968 and uh, several other editions have uh, been published the latest revision was published in second edition in 1988 the evolution and classification we discussed a wide range of characteristics important to phylogenetic uh, system he provide also provide a synoptic heaps designed to bring uh, the taxa in an appropriate alignment which actually these classification from this classification onwards <coughs> the uh, the vast array of uh, uh, characters or data they have you he has used were much important for uh, later people later partners who have uh, proposed the classifications who have helped uh, people to propose new classifications and get insight into uh, the evolution any of uh, groups that are untouched by early partners on this early and uh, this is uh, armin tatjan and swam uh, that russian partners <clears throat> this is the latest classification we discussed about that. this i have already mentioned and dalgren was a, a danish botanist uh, who was uh, to be of import advance in future classifications but uh, He died uh, prematurely. And, uh, his classification. He's a senior author of uh, the classification of monocotyl. That's we would have uh, had a lift. We would have uh, got uh, more uh, data on the other groups of uh, classifications. Early he died. <coughs> This is the work. This work, which uh, which was of great importance. <clears throat> Robert Thorn was uh, uh, was an American taxonomist and uh, attached to uh, a private botanical garden in California. He published his principles of classification as early as 1958 and 63. <clears throat> Later, he uh, developed. Uh, the classification of flowering plants in a book 
the subsequent revisions now happened uh, in the succeeding years. The version of his classification was published in 1999 and uh, revised, finally revised in 2003. <clears throat> his classification, if you look at it, were more emphasis on uh, phytochemical data made our uh, last uh, three, four decades. <clears throat> this man, <clears throat> he won a small incident, I should uh, remember. <clears throat> he worked uh, during the World War. He worked in the uh, American army and was flying uh, his uh, uh, plane was uh, shot down by the German army and uh, he was, it was uh, uh, in the uh, vast lake. He somehow uh, tried to escape and uh, while escaping, the first thing he saw was a, a water plant because that had a lot of water plants. Instead of uh, escaping from the pond immediately, being a botanist first, his uh, first uh, reaction was to identify what was the uh, aquatic plant in that pond. This he has written in his uh, memoirs later. <clears throat> A person who lived in our uh, times and uh, quietly passed away almost attaining century of uh, age was uh, Armin Taktajan, uh, the Russian botanist, who has uh, proposed uh, his classification in several uh, works. These are his uh, publications, covering plants. Actually, uh, uh, the group of families or uh, the upper group of uh, classification he has uh, made was the basis for uh, later classifications, even the terminology also were used like, like this. <clears throat> if you look at it, uh, his uh, Taktajan was uh, uh, for many uh, family names, many names he has used uh, classification. Taxonomy is not one of those sciences where young brilliance tend to, tends to shine most. Rather, it is a cumulative exercise which found the Dr. Peter Raven, close associate, a close colleague of, uh, and he was for many years director and also president of uh, Missouri Botanical Garden, describes Dr. Jim's work as a uh, Distillation, distillating of uh, distillation of uh, 60 years in understanding and mastering the intricacies of the plant kingdom in all of its manifest diversity and glory in geographical spread. This is what uh, <coughs> when told about yeah. this uh, ceremony when all the <coughs> from across the world they came together and uh, they sat together and uh, remembered Taktajan in a befitting manner. At the time of passing away, Taktajan was 99, almost uh, a century. He was a great partner and his classification had a great impact on understanding difficult uh, uh, groups of life. This is one uh, uh, poster I designed and put it in uh, Facebook in 2009. And this is the plant called the Thetsigenia, named after him. And uh, it was found in Madagascar. <clears throat> Following uh, Thetsigen and uh, uh, many of the earlier class uh, people, Kubitsky, another German uh, botanist, another um, 
botanists who have a uh, uh, lot of experience in different countries, Russia, Soviet Union, and many other countries. He published a series of uh, uh, books on families and genera of vascular plants, which was uh, basically an improvement of the longest uh, 1981 system, but he added a uh, lot of uh, data gathered from various sources. And also that several other botanists to come to terms with it or uh, to contribute to these families. These are the classifiers. So new development in taxonomy, which uh, I think uh, they are occurring uh, regularly, which I think many of the other groups uh, will do. Just from phylogeny, uh, there is a separate uh, uh, talk by Dr. Neil. D. Narasimhan uh, on Wednesday, I guess. And uh, this is one person who was behind uh, the APG and his students, uh, Swedish uh, people, Carl Grammar and others. And uh, as you know, molecular data were uh, made use of in classification by Mark Chase. Mark Chase, originally an orchid uh, uh, taxonomist who worked on the group of for South American orchid called the uh, Onsim and the related groups, but uh, he worked on Cactus and uh, many other groups and tried to uh, get a, a better picture of the entire group of uh, uh, families uh, which uh, made the uh, foundation for the APG classification. These are the things which uh, is happening. I think. Uh, <coughs> APG's uh, details of this uh, Narasimhan will discuss APG 2, 3. And, uh, I think uh, there is something. This is APG, APG4, <clears throat> molecular. These are all things which uh, will come in the later discussion. Some people, uh, especially non-taxonomists, abuse taxonomists as pesky taxonomists because uh, uh, taxonomists who make a lot of uh, changes in names make uh, people uh, uh, irritation in people who are not uh, taxonomists. So they call these taxonomists as pesky taxonomists without understanding the uh, thing that uh, uh, changes are uh, imminent, changes are necessary, as in more data on different groups of plants are available, making them available, uh, the change will again come and just as uh, a few years ago, Asclepiades was a family of uh, great importance. But uh, more data uh, from various uh, uh, disciplines came out, uh, which uh, brought that Asclepiades is uh, nothing but a part of uh, the science. Like that, uh, there are several revelations. And some of the, uh, for uh, this type of revelations, uh, the basic unit of walking is uh, this species. And when species is worked out thoroughly of a genus, people will uh, come to conclusion of uh, something which uh, earlier botanists could not uh, have thought of, think of. So this is one situation where uh, names will change as per the uh, data availability. So whether uh, you call Tax, uh, such a taxonomist as testing taxonomist or not, uh, changes will come in future also. Making so these changes ultimately will uh, keep our uh, uh, final uh, classification perfect in every sense. This is what is the work of uh, uh, more taxonomists. Major changes, crop has happened. 
Lamiacian, Verbenaceous, Reshuffle, Hydrophilacean, Lenovacea are included in Baraginaceae, Embitrates, like that, uh, there are so many. This, I think, Nelson will discuss more. Malvaceae came uh, equivalent of a strong uh, Christian order of Malvaceae. Inhaling Sterculiaceae as well as the mostly tropical families like the Peliaceae and Bombardaceae. Now all are under Malvaceae. So like that, uh, some people who have been following ardently and religiously some classifications, if, they, if, uh, if we say that uh, this is uh, not correct, uh, if uh, this is uh, uh, now there is no family such as uh, uh, Teliaceae, Bombardaceae, Sterculiaceae, people will uh, say that uh, you are a pesky tax animal. So as and when, uh, we need not worry because as and when more and more data come to light, people are uh, bound to uh, come to some conclusions on uh, joining uh, groups together, which will uh, make our system uh, foolproof in every rest. So uh, be open uh, to such uh, changes uh, and be uh, open to all the new evidence is coming forward to help us to understand uh, the plan uh, classifications much better. And uh, two guys uh, in recent times, this uh, I think uh, almost last slide, there is a uh, facility or a uh, website called a Plan Get Gateway, which, uh, which is using especially with a uh, Christian who's also with Martin S in company of uh, 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 Mark Chase and others, they have been trying to, in this framework, uh, they are introducing the global flora, a new international serial for botanical taxonomy to uh, provide accepted species level classifications for our vascular plant families based on available or generated molecular data and re-examining the literature and herbarium specimens in major herbarium. The goal is to provide a current, balanced, and practical taxonomy reflecting evolutionary relationships. This global uh, flora also, you can look at, uh, they are making use of FPG4, so you can look at uh, the website. This is the global flora. I think uh, you have been given a poster of this as uh, the cover of uh, the lecture notes. You can look at it and uh, you can enlarge it and uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Renu will send you a hard copy of this this uh, at a later date. Those who participated. This uh, James Bing who has been uh, part of this uh, plant uh, gateway limited has been helping. Uh, and also Martin Christian who's these are the classification simplified. In total, there are now 452 vascular plant families. And uh, when, uh, if you remember, uh, 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 we just proposed this family classification, there were only 99. Now it is 450. So a lot of uh, regrouping, reclassification of General species have happened in the last 300 years. Just look at uh, the feather, how it uh, starts from Benamukar, it was almost 200 families, and now it has uh, increased, and then uh, now it has come back to 416. Several families which you find uh, here and there have this IP1 and IPG2. Now, APG4, it is 416 families, which I am sure uh, uh, Narasimhan will talk about. These are these bigger families. This is on a very, this is on this one small factor I want to discuss. Uh, this is a very striking uh, study, uh, how far it will affect uh, the classification and because uh, molecular data with uh, uh, the Nilampo and also with uh, these things, these were never uh, related. Now we have come to the conclusion that these are 
more related than this. How it comes, we don't know. This is uh, 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 one family, this is a Tetramelase, which is uh, having a single genus and a single species. And now it is in the family Tetramelase, not uh, that is casein. As per the APG4, this is in Tetramelase. This is uh, the plant in Nilampur in Kerala. Of course, it occurs in different places, in, even in Angor Valley, Angor, uh, that uh, temple. So look at this temple of this is uh, Tetramelase. This is Dr. Natesh and wife. I think this is what I want to talk about. My goodness, I took more uh, uh, hours than I was allowed to. Do. Thank you very much for all the people. How many are uh, remaining? I don't know because I took more time. Sorry for that, but I try to be very, uh, I don't know, I, I, how can I say, brief, I cannot. Thank, yes, thank you very much for the Thank you, sir, for your excellent talk and uh, covering the all uh, classification, starting from the previous classification to the latest one. We are thankful to that. And uh, because of short of time, as you are the, um, Tomorrow you are also there. So we will ask the questions tomorrow, which the students have put up now. Is, is, is it fine, okay. sir? Or you can take right now? Yeah, yeah it is fine. It's tomorrow fine, sir. We will discuss. Tomorrow, huh, tomorrow we will discuss the queries raised by Itna. Now I begin with vote of thanks. On behalf of Department of Botany, Gargi College, I, Dr. Renu Soni, take this opportunity to vote of, propose the vote of thanks. I extend a very hearty thank to our team speaker, team speaker, Dr. C. Satish Kumar for giving his valuable time. Thank you, sir. I will be always grateful to you for your kind support and support and kindness. The introduction of plant taxonomy, plant classification was extremely well delivered. And sir, you are you are the precise person to deliver this talk. Thank you so much, sir, for making excellent presentation and making this topic interesting and worthwhile. I am also thankful for you for sharing your knowledge with us and also showing, showing the rare collection of books on plant systematics that we have not seen and you have shown at these uh, books also. Thank you, sir. I am sure the student and all present here will have a lot to take away from this session. I also extend my thanks to our principal ma'am, Dr. Pramila Kumar for her guidance, support and encouragement. I'm grateful to my superannuated teachers, Dr. Shashi Tyagi, Dr. Kiran Prabha ma'am, Dr. Geeta Mathur for attending this session and thank you for encouragement and support. I also extend my special thanks to Mr. Anuj Bhardwaj and Mr. Om Prakash for giving excellent technical support. I'm very grateful to the department faculty who has given enormous support to make this course successful. Our heartful thanks to our wonderful students who have turned up in such great number, not only from Delhi, but also from other states. Thank you so much for your participation and cooperation. Finally, I extend my gratitude to all who have directly or indirectly contributed to this national level virtual course on plant systematics. Once again, I thank you all for your cordial cooperation. Stay home, stay healthy. With this warm words message, we move to the end of today's session. Thank you. Thank you, sir, once again. It was really very nice talk. And you have covered so beautifully to us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, can I request our teachers to uh, open your video so that we can have a group photograph if time permits. Can I request my teacher, all the teachers to please switch off your cameras so that we have a video, uh, group photo. Sir, sir, aap kaan ja rahe ho? Sati, sir, with you. Tyagi, ma'am. Tyagi, ma'am, Neha.
हेलो मैम हाँ हेलो सर थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर वेरी नाइस टॉक नेहा कैन यू टेक नेहा कैन यू क्लिक यस मैम आई डू अ प्रिंट स्क्रीन व्हेन ऑल विल बी प्रेजेंट और कोई भी नहीं है टीचर्स में नो मैम ओनली शिशु के आगे मैम इज अपीयरिंग चल ठीक है इनके हम ले लेते हैं इनकी ले ले नाउ गीता मैम हमने भी कैमरा ऑन किया हुआ है इवन आवर कैमरा इज ऑन हां मैम आप दिख रहे हो मैम यस मैम नाउ नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ आर सीन ओके फाइन Dr. Satish, the talk was really very nice. Thank you, sir. Wonderful talk. Time and effort. It was very, very. Thank you, everyone. Ma'am, I have taken. Okay, okay. now let us know. And many more. Many more teachers are coming. Of course, सबके ले ले एक साथ ग्रेड व्यू कर